Hey everyone, Amtrak Guy365 here, and today on this edition of Engines of Amtrak, I'll be discussing the Siemens Charger. We arrive in the year 2014. Happy by Pharrell Williams is the number one song in America, Five Nights at Freddy's is just starting to blow up in popularity, and German tech company Siemens is gaining traction in the North American rail market. Their electric ACS-64 model was proving its worth on Amtrak's Northeast Corridor, and this got the railroad thinking about the next generation of diesel power. General Electric's Genesis series had been the heart of Amtrak's fleet for 21 years now, and while they were continuing to clock in thousands of reliable miles, it was about time to consider retirement given the advances in technology since the 1990s and stricter emission standards from the Environmental Protection Agency. Having been impressed by the ACS-64, Amtrak went with Siemens for a new model. In March, Siemens, in cooperation with several states, penned a $225 million contract to build a fleet of 32 locomotives for state-sponsored higher-speed inner-city service. Other passenger railroads would also place orders with unique specifications. Its design was derived from the European Vectron, ACS-64, and input from the Next Generation Equipment Committee. The result was the Siemens Charger with 4400 horsepower, or SC44. They're powered by a Cummins 16-cylinder QSK95 four-stroke high-speed diesel engine reaching a top speed of 125 miles per hour. They tip the scales at 267,000 pounds and come in at a length of 71 and a half feet, a width of 10 feet, and a height of 14 feet, 4 inches. A Nathan K5LA air horn serves as the voice of the fleet. Compared to their GE predecessor, the chargers were lighter weight, more efficient, cleaner, and featured newer technology. All units came equipped with an LED display board and extremely bright LED headlights that'd make a lifted pickup truck driver blush. Unique to the California locomotives was a hump at the rear to line up with the height of bi-level cars. The first production model rolled out of the Florin California factory on March 26, 2016, later adorned in the paint scheme of the new Amtrak Midwest brand. It and a second locomotive would undergo testing at the Transportation Technology Center in Pueblo, Colorado. Federal certification tests on the main line began in the first half of 2017. Having been approved, revenue service for the Midwest unit started that August, in October for the Capitol Corridor in San Joaquin, November for the Cascades, and November 2018 for the Surfline. Around 2019, the P-42s and F-59s had essentially been replaced by chargers in regular service. The units proved to load and get up to speed far quicker, while also bringing trains to a smooth stop via energy-saving regenerative braking. During station stops, the chargers hum quietly compared to the guttural industrial rumble of the Genesis. Things were going well for the most part. The chargers could handle higher speed trains just as well as commuter runs. Until winter arrived. Midwest and Cascades units came down with a nasty case of engine malfunctions and shutdowns, namely in the extreme cold or heavy snow. The air intake, located on the rear truck, sucks in snow and other debris from the ground, which then freezes and short circuits the dynamic brakes, and in turn ruins the auxiliary and head end power system, until killing the entire locomotive. The large vents on either side of the locomotive also leave room for Mother Nature's elements to creep in. On top of that, the charger suffered from year round software glitches that resulted in power loss and unexpected shutdowns. I actually experienced this myself when I was no more than like 15 minutes out of the Port Huron station when we had to stop on the main line so the engineer could restart the unit's computers. Thankfully, the delay wasn't too long though. With the case of new power for state-supported routes squared away, Amtrak still had to replace the P-42s on long-distance trains. 2018 saw them order 75 new units. This was the Amtrak Long Distance Charger with 4200 horsepower, aka the ALC-42. Compared to the SC-44s, the ALCs are heavier, have a more rounded out nose cone, 
larger fuel tank and sandbox, more powerful HEP generator, but 200 less horsepower to prioritize fuel efficiency and lessen the wear and tear on the prime mover. The second unit, number 301, was delivered in June 2021, done up in Amtrak's Day 1 paint scheme to celebrate 50 years of service. Five more units arrived in the stopgap Phase 6 design, with later units receiving Phase 7, the new standard paint scheme. After a photo shoot with the press, revenue service began on February 8, 2022, with two units placed on the Empire Builder, while a P-42 provided backup power on the rear. However, the trip was marred by a myriad of issues. Number 301's positive train control system failed, so a P-42 had to lead the train out of Chicago, Illinois over an hour late. At Glenview, the charger overvolted and essentially exploded the P-42's HEP and started a small fire in the lounge car's generator, leading to the car being removed in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They finally arrived in Seattle an hour and 20 minutes late. Soon thereafter, a persistent Amtrak announced that they'd be acquiring another 50 ALCs for a total of 125 units. Given the fact they aren't too different from the SC-44s, problems with software and hardware were still present, and Snowmiser was most definitely not their friend. Cold temperatures would freeze the in-cab toilet and harden the transformer oil due to the piping design, thus making it difficult to produce any form of traction or head-end power. P-42s and Dash 8s have acted as backup power, and even freight railroads have had to come to the rescue. An SC-44 was to blame for one such nightmarish train ride in Michigan on October 7th, 2022. The lead unit on Wolverine Train 351 lost power around Chelsea, and turned what would have been a roughly 6-hour trip into a 19-hour ordeal that would test anyone's patience. Without head-end power, the train had no electricity, heating, or functioning toilets, and eventually the potable water had run dry too. Train 353 later arrived to tow 351 onto Chicago. But then there was a brake issue, and then a battery problem with the charger on 351 led to another stop in Gary, Indiana. With a lack of communication and conditions becoming unacceptable, Many passengers evacuated the train themselves and called in rideshares to finish their unexpectedly hellish journey. Now, the question of the hour is, why are Amtrak's chargers suffering so much compared to someone like Brightline? Well, there's a lot of rumors floating around on rail fan forums, but to summarize the facts, Amtrak's units were proving problematic thanks to a parts shortage, extreme cold and snow ingestion short-circuiting the electronics, and an abundance of new sensors and computers that rely on each other, meaning an increased likelihood of glitches that can shut down the locomotive. Brightline has shown more success with their locomotive seemingly thanks to a more temperate climate and differing maintenance practices. Amtrak's Western chargers also seem to be working a little better thanks to the warmer climate. By 2023, Siemens was working to resolve the ALC's woes. According to a company spokeswoman, We've identified both a software solution and an additional hardware improvement that will eliminate the issue experienced. The software update has been implemented to the entire fleet, greatly reducing the potential for incidents. The hardware modification, replacement of a pipe, will be completed as quickly as possible. Since then, Amtrak has stated the ALCs are performing better, experiencing four times fewer failures. However, new problems arose with the diesel exhaust fluid dosing system and snow and ice triggering the engine fuel cutoff switches, preventing fuel from reaching the engine, thus causing power loss. These issues are actively being addressed. According to the Next Generation Equipment Committee, the SC-44s are also improving thanks to new software and parts. The most recent development for the fleet came in the summer of 2024. SC-44 number 4626 rolled out of the shop with an ALC-style nose following an accident. I'm not sure what the reasoning is, but only time will tell if this will become the new standard following rebuilds. In the meantime, Amtrak's chargers are still roaming the rails. For the most part, they work fine, but other times they just... don't. In December 2022, Amtrak announced an ambitious modernization plan known as Amtrak Aero. 83 diesel, diesel battery, and dual-mode train sets by Siemens look to standardize and replace the aging fleet on the East Coast and Pacific Northwest. ALC42E locomotives and cab cars will utilize the Charger's technology and appearance, while the passenger cars will use the Venture design. 
improved accessibility, speaker systems and Wi-Fi, new electrical outlets, touch-free doors, and larger windows are just some of their selling points. Sets will feature a Panagraph-equipped auxiliary power vehicle for routes with overhead wires, or a battery car to provide third-rail electric power. The Aerofleet is expected to debut in 2026 on the Cascade service. Amtrak is very much in an optimistic yet rough transitional period in 2025. While billions upon billions of dollars are being poured into infrastructure improvements, new equipment and services, and the Charger's teething troubles have improved, winter and software-related issues are still persistent eight years later. From a graphic design standpoint, the paint scheme on the Midwest unit still doesn't line up with Siemens' own Venture cars as the units were originally intended to be paired with bi-level cars. Venture cars entered service in 2022 to pair with the Chargers as a semi-permanently coupled train set, some featuring cab cars. On top of all of that, the rollout of new Siemens equipment has faced many delays, making Amtrak's equipment shortage even more egregious in the face of record ridership. The P-42s and especially their existing car fleet are really showing their age in recent times, and the railroad is struggling to maintain normal service levels, especially in the winter. ALC-42s are still being delivered, the Aerofleet is ever so slowly rolling off the production line, and a replacement for the Superliners has yet to be finalized. We can only hope Amtrak and Siemens work out these bugs, as according to the railroad, these locomotives are going to be the new face of Amtrak for the next 30 or 40 years. The Chargers have potential to be Amtrak's new shining star, so long as the kinks are ironed out. Any new technology is bound to have its fair share of issues. The Genesis series had their own problems thanks to the new computer tech of the time, but the Charger is a far more complex enigma. With their first overhauls due in a matter of years, perhaps the units will turn over a new leaf as crews better understand the tech and work out new solutions. Regardless, the Siemens Charger has left a questionable mark on the history book of Amtrak, the National Railroad Passenger Corporation. Thank you for watching this episode of Engines of Amtrak. I can't believe it's already been two years since the last episode, that's crazy. But anyway, thank you to everyone who sent in pictures and videos for me to use, and now I'd like to thank my channel members. Special thanks to Mooter, Tommy Rosini, Grand Canyon Studios, Amtrak Fan 19, Gojira's Trains, Jackboy317, Jacko Beans, The Warrior Cats Train Enthusiast, and Transit Kid Jason for subscribing to the Conductor tier. Your extra support always means a lot. Alrighty, well that's all for me, so thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you in another video.